Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, Automators. Um, today, we're going to cover uh, seven tips for recognizing what to automate. All right, man. Let's go. Hey, it's Jackie from Denmark here. And, and Joe from Dallas, Texas. Hi, everybody. So what are we covering today, Jackie? Uh, seven tips for how to recognize what to automate. You, we probably have many, many more, but here is just to cover some of them. When you sit, you do repetitive tasks, whatever you do, try and batch things together, right? When you do something, you do it in a row. You might have already kind of put it aside until you picked it up and started doing that Excel sheet or those emails or whatever it might have been. But yeah, things that you can batch together, you can probably also automate. Yeah, I. It, this is such, it, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but when you start doing it, it makes it so much easier because you're doing the same thing over and over. And often I'll find stuff that it took you, know, like even launching my Zoom menu, right? Like I, I went, how long have we been doing this now? <laughs> Five years or something? Um, it was this year until I finally made a hotkey to launch my Zoom menu. I'm like, why Why was that not a thing? Uh, but until you do them over and over, it's difficult to spot a pattern of like, oh, you know what? I keep doing this thing a lot. And yeah. the other thing, if you go a little deeper into it too, I know, Jackie, from when we're actually working and developing our code, um, when you, you know, the best way to realize you can convert something to a function or something is to be working in there and you, you know, the second or third time you do it, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, this is, this is the same thing, right? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to convert this into like a function and pass a couple parameters to it because it's really, I shouldn't have them all blocky and be separate, right? Uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, the next big one is, uh, and this is a little tricky, but you know, keep some sort of a log or a calendar. So like you could have a, a work calendar, a work schedule, and just, you know, start looking at your calendar. When you have enough things on your calendar or whatever log it is, you can start seeing like, oh, you know what? I do this eight times a week or I do it, you know, three times a week. And, and you start seeing the patterns of things you do a lot. Um, the same thing with the diary, if you're keeping track of what you do over and over, you start realizing, wow, you know what? I use this thing a lot, right? And that's the stuff we want to automate. It's usually, it's either done very frequently or it's uh, just something that's um, done by a lot of people also, um, or it's very complicated and we want to simplify it, right? So there's, there's some good opportunities to, to automate things. Yeah, I, I'd say any one way you can actually keep a track of what you have done, because m many people have this mentality or whatever, uh, now I got it done, then that's out of their mind, right? Why think about what I did last week or the month before then? And that's fair and efficient when, when thinking of it that way. But when you can look back at whatever log you have kept, that's when stuff you might not have caught otherwise actually shows up and you can simplify it for the next time or the next time. So, yeah, it's a great idea to keep a log, that's for sure. I'd say we, we have one more here. The third one is <laughs> slow down. Pay attention to what you're doing, right? Block time to so you're able to look at what you do. So if if you do it that way, um, you actually have a much better chance of catching. Or I'd say sometimes even when I get a task the first time, I might even automate it before knowing if it's one I get back, just because because I automated. I actually do take it a bit slower. And fair enough, it might take me a little longer to get those small things done. But I've so many times over actually ended up using the code or the automation that I made. And I might have caught small pieces of those tasks where I was like, I should have automated this a long time ago. <laughs> It, it's a great way to slow down. And to me, it made many of them fun as well. So, Yeah, I, I think humans just aren't good at, at mentally identifying because we got a lot of other things going on. Plus, 
our boss or for whatever reason, our business at our back, we feel like we need to get stuff done. When you can take a little more time and slow down and look at what you're doing. And here's the thing. You don't have to, which I know you, you said you do, and I do too at times, right? You don't have to automate it right then. But just what I'll do is I'll, I'll write myself and you can see like here. I have little sticky notes, right? I'll make a note. Oh, yeah, you know, do work on this, right? And then I keep working because the problem is if I don't write it down somewhere in a place I go back and look, I forget about it. So just, just keep away, have a way to, that you can easily remind yourself later, you know, that you, hey, you know what? I should look at this, right? And, and often, um, and back to your point too, I can't tell you of any time that I decided to automate something and then I was disappointed that I actually automated it because I never used it again because it's, it's not the case, right? It's either I reuse that exact code over and over or I borrow from it and use it and stuff going forward. So it's always time well invested. Um, yeah, yeah. One other they, thing... Yeah. One other thing that might be a little controversial is to actually like create like a keylogger, right? Now, the, the nice thing about a keylogger is, again, we're, we're humans, right? We don't notice these things. But with a keylogger, you could um, break it out and look at things that you do very frequently, that you type very frequently, or that maybe programs launch very frequently. And it can be an easy way for you to spot these patterns statistically. Like you can drop it into Excel or something, do a frequency count on it and start seeing things that bubble up to the top. Yeah, with with all of the different methods you have in something like AutoHotKey and then catching all those things you sit there and type, uh, you could do it on words, you could do it on sentences, you could do it with some kind of timing where uh, every time I've not typed for every given amount of time, make a new entry, whatever it might be, so that you can actually go back and look at how many times you typed your email or whatever it might be. It could be all kinds of stuff. And sure enough, key loggers ain't the safest, safest thing to have. But if it's local, it's on your machine, and it's logging what you're doing, it should be okay. And if you don't want to keep it on for a long time, remove it between sessions or whatever you want to do. But yeah, it, it's a great idea. Absolutely, Joe. Yeah, actually, to your point there, Jackie, um, you could even just have it as something that runs but doesn't actually save as a file. And that way, it's a little safer, right? It's not a lot, but at least it's a little bit less likely to end up somewhere where you don't want it. <laughs> yeah, you, you could have it running. So it was just some accumulation that the script actually did in, in running memory. And uh, you could pull it out with a hotkey or whatever and dump it into Excel and check it out or... You might even make the script as if, if you had the time for it to actually give you the three top sentences of the day or whatever, who knows. So yeah, there, there's a lot of, of possibilities there. That's for sure. Uh, I'd say the fifth one we have is be aware of the many different approaches to automating, right? I, I know Joe, he has uh, this one where 17 ways to automate with uh, on a hotkey. It's a video. I think you have it both on your site and YouTube and stuff. Go check it out if you want to have different ways to, to know. But just be aware of it because just because you're used to doing hot strings, you might be limited in the scope of what you think you can automate. I have colleagues that would have ginormous benefit of having some kind of um, outro, what, what's it called, what you have on the phone, I'm just losing track, you know, where it spells the rest of the words for you. And stuff. Autocorrect. Yeah, autocorrect uh, globally, and I know there are tools out there that can do stuff like that, but I don't know how many times I see them backspace through five, six words, and retyping uh, four of them again just to change the single one. <laughs> Stuff like that. It might seem very minor because they do it right then. It takes less than a minute, but they have done it 60 times today or something similar, right? It, it's be aware of stuff and ways to automate. Absolutely. Yeah, and if if I had thought a little outside the box, I would have added. I mean, there's actually a couple other ones that aren't in that document, but the the instant one I would add to this right now would be to say, look at quick access pop up because it allows you to do, I'd say at least four, um, you know, 
of the approaches for auto hockey, but you don't actually program, right? It has a GUI and you just, you know, you can do some clicks, but it alone can save you so much time. It's, it's crazy, right? And once you start learning that tool, I'm doing, I don't know if I, I told you, Jackie, I'm doing weekly calls with Jean to, mm -hmm. um, to dive deeper into the tool and I'm learning stuff it can do. I had no idea it could do. I'm like, wow, that's, that's really cool. Um, it's got some great functionality. So uh, anyway, it's another great tool. Uh, the, um, which the other one though is the, um, what's the analogy? Like, you know, the whole, if you have a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail, right? And when you suddenly know other approaches, you realize, holy cow, like there, there are ways to automate some of these things that you didn't even realize was possible because you, you if you only knew, let's say hot keys or hot strings, you're like, oh, if I went to automate that, it would be really hard because in Excel, the different cells and how would I spread? No, but there's calm, right? Like you could use calm in Excel. Like there's so many different ways to automate programs and don't get stuck in one approach. Yeah, I'd say we, we had quite a bit on that in the last um, webinar where we had someone actually come on and say, how can I automate in this program where I can't use that method or that method? Uh, what other methods can I use? And we covered a few of them and some of them we skipped over quite quickly and others we were like, yeah, we, we might not go in deeper with this because we've already covered that in other webinars. But in general, we still covered quite uh, a lot of different ways to do stuff, even though it at first seemed undoable. Great. Uh, the, the next one is just, it, it's more about, so I guess this is kind of a double double thing here. So have someone else who, who actually knows how to automate, you know, watch what you're doing. Now, if they don't know how to automate, just having someone else watch you, I think is beneficial because Again, uh, the way we work, we don't notice patterns because we're doing them, right? And when someone else watches you do, they realize you do the same thing over and over. It's so much easier to watch someone else do something and go, hey, did you realize you just did the same thing three times, you know, and you can make a shortcut for that or you can do this or that, right? Uh, now, if that person actually is someone who automates things for a living, then the world really changes, right? Because they can offer up a lot of different solutions or, or options for you. I'd say it, it, to me, it kind of goes into to this um, read it to the doc or whatever it is. One of the methods you can um, debug your code or, oh, or yes. at least understand yeah. the code better. Like the bobblehead yeah. doll. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you have a bobblehead dog, you know, doll and, and you explain what your code is doing to it or someone else, this is kind of reverse. You do your thing and have someone else watch. And they might be someone who knows how to automate, they might not. But at least if the task at hand is to try and spot stuff that you do repeatedly, just because you might be too much in a hurry or too set in your way or whatever it might be, can be a great um, you know the uh, spotting stuff. The analogy I think that everyone will understand, especially if they've ever tried it, is uh, when you do, when when you're doing like professional speaking or like Jackie and I are doing these recordings, you never, ever hear yourself say the word um. And then when you go to edit it and play it back, you just go, oh my Lord, like I say um every other second, right? You can't catch your own things. But I can hear when Jackie does it, I'm sure he can hear it when I do it, right? It's, it, you know, if you're trying. But even when you're trying on yourself, it's just, you just don't hear them. It's, it's crazy. And I think it's still the same thing with the spotting of repetition and what you're doing. Our brains just aren't good at that, at spotting it. It, it takes, um, a, it, that's why it takes something to break that cycle and slow down or have a way to look at, examine yourself, your own work without being in the moment. Yeah. I'd, I'd say I have a colleague and he's extreme. It's not, um, it's, it's other fillers that he uses. It's, it's almost has sentences that keeps coming back in his conversation. He's really hard to, to have a conversation with because everybody else but him feels like he's dragging it out extremely because that's the sixth time you have said the same three words um, after you said what you said. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stuff like that. And I'd say the last one we have here, the seventh one, is watch other places, get inspiration, like watch a forum that uses whatever language or hotkey 
subscribe to a YouTube channel. It might be uh, Joe's here or, or whichever one it might be. One that covers kind of your area or find videos that, that fits or I'd say be on an email list. Whatever you you can find out there that might inspire you to actually um, get ideas for automation. You, you know, it's I actually just wrote up um, June 20th was World Productivity Day. And uh, I wrote up an email to send it out to my list, which if you're interested in signing up, you can go to the-automator.com slash news um, and sign up. And it's a, I usually I do a weekly newsletter. Usually it's, here's some cool stuff I've done. Here's a script I found. You know, here's examples of things we've automated and uh, stuff. But in it, I, I said, you know, in the beginning of the, the email, I said, I, I did all these expert interviews and Jackie was one of them. This is over the last years. And I think I had like 27 interviews where I talked to people who automate things and even though at the big, the first, I'd say like five or so, I started identifying patterns and what I was looking for the set, but I still kept doing them because I love talking to different people that automate things and find ways to be productive because we all do things very differently. And we come up with different ways of doing things that we would never think about. And no matter how good you are, there's just always different people who are doing stuff slightly different. And you go, oh, wow, I, I never would have thought about doing something this way, right? And you can adapt it to your needs. So that's why I highly encourage you to watch YouTube or, or just listen to stuff or whatever, but have other sources that where you see examples of what people are doing. And it can just really help you. Because, and Jackie and I talk about this a lot. If you ever want to convince someone to start automating, the best you can do is to show them an example as close to what they're actually doing for work, right? The closer it is to what they're doing, the more suddenly they can go, oh, I see how I can use that, right? Well, this is kind of the same in the sense of we watch other people's stuff and over time we'll find some, and, and, and here's the thing, like with me even, I can watch something from three years ago and three years ago, I didn't see how it was applicable, but now that I've, I've learned more, now I see the applicable, how applicable it is, right? So just keep exposing yourself to the stuff and over time you'll realize it's easier to adapt other people's uses of technology and how they approach something and just borrow from it and learn from it and you know find a way to, to automate your own thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. So if you guys have any things that you like to do um, to help spot things, you know, write them in the comments here and let us know uh, what you do because I, I love learning from other people. It's great. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, bye, Joe. So if you enjoyed listening to that, make sure you head to pod.v-automator.com and take a look for it.